You use an electric stove, it's terrible. There's no control. Cooking's no fun, and the food comes out bland. Maybe somebody needs to break the news to Jill. How is she going to make her spinach artichoke that with that gas stove. The Biden administration is considering banning gas stoves over concerns of indoor air pollutants. And that's not fair and well for First Lady Jill Biden, who posted a photo cooking on a, wait for it, gas stove. First Lady Jill Biden now catching some heat on social media over this photo from two years ago, showing her cook on a gas stove herself. Yikes. Is this about a fight by the woke folk and how far they're willing to fight for clean energy. We'll get into it with a man who has a lot to say, Tyrus, in Focus next. This is not the WWE, this is the Royal Rumble. Why is that how you introduce your guests? Anyway, Jesse Waters, I understand that it's an easy evasion, an easy explanation for your bland food is to blame it on your oven, but you you need to season your food. I mean, that's that's why it's bland, it's not, see, I don't understand how you think it could be the the the, the way that you cook it. but. In any event, um, this is their go-to to critique what Joe Biden has not done, which is suggest that we should ban gas stoves. He hasn't done that, they're not banning them. There was a person in government who suggested eventually we should phase them out, not ban them, not take them away. So it's not even happening. But even if it were, the idea that showing an old photo of someone using a thing that might in the future be banned, as a gotcha makes literally no sense. If eventually we suggest people should drive electric cars, it is not a good counterpoint to show a photo of Joe Biden in a Camaro. That I, I don't know how to explain this to people whose brain is so riddled with worms that they think that that's a counter argument. But Jill Biden having used a gas stove doesn't stop gas stoves from contributing to childhood asthma. It's still a thing. Jill Biden grew up in houses that had lead paint. It still should be banned. Is this making any sense, AB? I don't understand why they think that's a clever point. Well, because if they had taken enough time to actually read the Inflation Reduction Act, as opposed to just deciding not to vote for it and not to support it, then they would probably understand what this transition looks like, right? So nobody had an argument when we transitioned from a floppy disk to CD disk, CD ROMs, <laughs> when we went from CD ROMs to now we just have codes, right? Nobody had an issue with any of that. But now all of a sudden, as we start to upgrade, things, right? And things that could potentially help our environment even more. Now it's a problem because one side decided to do it and you didn't decide to do it. Or because you didn't plan financially to lose your financial backing by being invested in this type of corporation. Some of y'all did, but most of y'all didn't. That's what it's about at the end of the day. This happened two years ago. She used what she had. And when they realized, oh, this is probably not something we should continue doing, they are transitioning out of that. But of course, this is what the right wing does. When they don't have any points, any facts, when they don't have anything else to talk about, they just throw fear at you. They're gonna take this away from you. Take The only people that's been taken has been the Republican Party, just repo rights all day long. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like the the reason I think you reference like the transition from floppy disk to CD. The reason we were able to do that is because at that point the right wing didn't claim that getting rid of floppy drives was a government plot to control your brain. It's all in. It's just it's just propaganda. Like the reason that they don't want to use LED light bulbs because they were told that they should be scared of using them. That's it. They they are being manipulated. Fear mongered around literally any change. And you know, for a long time, I would have said that this is just because it's being done by the Democrats. And I think that that's largely true. But bear in mind, the vaccine was rolled out by Donald Trump. He very enthusiastically told people they could use it. And the right still fear mongered about it and eventually got basically every Republican to be terrified of using this product. So they just need something. And if it's something big like a vaccine, they'll use that. If it's stoves, they'll use that. If it's a slow news day, then they'll talk about the packaging on M&Ms. Like they need something to terrify people about, and that's what this is really about. We're gonna get into the AOC stuff. We unfortunately don't have time, but again, pointing out that she has at one point used a gas stove does not erase decades of scientific research showing that it contributes to a variety of ailments. That's just not how that works. And by the way, if you found a photo of Tucker Carlson using an electric stove, 
that doesn't counter the other thing. Like that's not how anything works. By the way, people are saying that uh, the, the the guest was uh, in the WWE. No, I get that. I see that he's got the belt over him, whatever. What I'm saying is like for the rest of his career, every single time he comments on the news, they're gonna introduce him as if he's running down the stage like to jump in the ring. He's he's a full grown human. That was his past career, whatever. Now he's also a political commentator. Like he can just be introduced like a regular person. Uh, Dave Batista was in the WWE. In his next in his upcoming M Night Shyamalan movie, they're not gonna like show him like taking a steel chair to the back of someone's head. You can have other things that you do. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.